In the lesson on aromaticity, we saw that benzene was 36 kilocalories per mole more stable than a hypothetical six-membered ring with three separate pi bonds. Using a similar line of reasoning, we can measure the resonant stabilization energies of heterocycles as well. Although you shouldn't memorize the data in this table, it is worth noting that aromatic heterocycles tend to exhibit less stabilization energy than benzene. I'll leave it up to you to consider why that might be the case. Let's take a survey of more complex heterocyclic systems. Although the categories we'll examine here are somewhat arbitrary, they can help you mentally organize the different kinds of heterocycles. First, if we replace the NH group of parole with oxygen or sulfur, we arrive at furan or thiophene, respectively. As we've seen previously, the O2 and S2 atoms in these molecules contribute two electrons to the pi system and leave a lone pair as part of the sigma system of the molecule. Fused aromatic ring systems involve connected rings with two atoms in common. As long as the total number of pi electrons in such a system conforms to Huckel's rule, it remains aromatic. Five common fused ring systems are shown here. Try counting the number of pi electrons in each to verify that these molecules remain aromatic. Of the five, indole is the most important, as we will see it in the future as the side chain of the amino acid tryptophan. Heterocycles may contain one or more heteroatoms. Here you see six examples of aromatic heterocycles that contain two heteroatoms apiece. Verify, by counting pi electrons, that each of these is aromatic. Furthermore, consider the relative basicity of the two heteroatoms in each structure. Within the molecule imidazole, for instance, which nitrogen atom would we expect to be more basic? Although both the N2 and N3 nitrogens possess lone pairs, only the sp2 hybridized lone pair on the N2 nitrogen is available to act as a base. The other lone pair is part of the aromatic pi system and is too stable to be reactive. Finally, let's take a look at some examples of heterocycles that you might expect to exist, but don't. All of the so-called heterobenzenes that you see on this slide are too unstable to exist for long periods of time. The pyrillium ion is highly electrophilic thanks to its positive charge. In the presence of any and all nucleophiles, it reacts to give a neutral compound. The examples you see on the bottom, however, are more interesting. Why are aromatic heterocycles involving third row elements unstable? Remember that the stabilization that results from a given orbital interaction depends on the energy gap between the interacting orbitals. When the gap is small, the stabilization is large, and when the gap is large, the resulting stabilization is small. When the orbitals of second row elements interact with one another, energy gaps are relatively small. However, when second row elements like carbon interact with third row elements, the gaps tend to be very large, and the stabilization caused by such interactions is quite low. The end result is that the pi molecular orbitals of, for example, silabenzene are nowhere near as stable as those of benzene. The greater instability of these compounds makes them tough to isolate and observe.